I was like, damn, me doing shit. She just felt like he was trying to set her up and kill her. That's what she told me. She like, I think he's just trying to kill me. He don't like me. What's the Hey, what's up, y'all? Y'all know my slogan. I don't know it all, but I know what I've been through. Now, today I had to come through and talk about this King Vaughn and K.I. situation, man. Um, I just feel lost for words because it's kind of weird to me how all this is coming out now. I mean, if you know, you already know, right? But the sudden news about this quote-unquote alleged leak of evidence that just came out um, with these documents proving that King Vaughn is, in fact, her killer is kind of crazy to me because also for y'all that know what's going on um you know king vaughn wasn't alone that's one and two why is he being highlighted throughout this whole situation and why is it coming out now all right so um in this video today we're going to get into the whole situation of um how and why they pretty much highlighting king vaughn as chaos killer and not to mention i also want to get into the history of ki and um your boy king vaughn so make sure you like comment share and subscribe hit that bell so you're notified every time we drop new content and make sure make sure make sure you stay up to date with some of the latest content on youtube now let's get straight into it now as a lot of y'all may know chicago is a different kind of place man because even though 17 year old Guy Kara Barnes, a.k.a. K.I., and Davon Bennett, a.k.a. King Vaughn, was heavy into it with each other. When her Twitter was hacked, it showed her and King Vaughn actually conversing with each other via DMs. More so Vaughn trying to get in her pants, whatever the case may be, and no disrespect to K.I., but uh, Vaughn must have been a crazy man because uh, not only was she really in the street. You know, but she looked like one of the homies. Like, I, I don't know which other way to say it, man. But aside from that, my point was that in Chicago, you could be heavy into it with someone and still have a regular conversation with this person as if you are not even at odds. So much that you would think that they've been friends or something for the longest, but they really enemies trying to kill each other. And it's kind of weird because it's like confusing. And we've seen the same type of behavior between THF Zoo and 051 Melly. Now, there was two guys really into it, but sat on IG Live sometime for hours. From time to time, they actually laughed and conversed with each other back and forth. That was crazy. But when Melly died, THF Zoo paid his respects to Melly respectfully. So, you know, killers respect killers. But anyway, even though Vaughn always tweeted KI and weirdly flirted with her, she was in the streets catching bodies, a few that allegedly were close to Vaughn and the BDs, and two main ones were OD and J Money. And for those that don't know, a situation involving the two will be the beginning of a deadly vi uh, rivalry when an altercation in 2012 at a train station that left K.I. being jumped by King Vaughn and other suspects who caught her lacking. Now, after the situation, Vaughn went back and forth with her on Twitter until he would be arrested in 2012. I posted a lot of the tweets, but it was way too much talking between the two. And honestly speaking, I think if they wasn't ops, and blood wasn't spilled on each other's side they would have both ended up getting a relationship or something together i'm telling you because if you really pay attention it seemed like ki was actually feeling vom's gangster like she was messing with him like she was really like you know she was i want to say she was digging them because they she didn't really give no clear indication about that but the way they conversed with each other via uh uh, uh twitter and the way the vibe seemed i don't know man it, it, she was answering him back and forth you gotta remember she's a woman so even if she don't want to show any type of emotion it's all about energy she was giving him enough attention to where you know he felt like he kept going but 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 it was a it was blood spilled on each side that you know stopped them two from even really have being able to interact like that so i guess that's where it stopped and like I said, even though she kept her guard up, she did always give Vaughn a little, I don't know, maybe to me, I just, I just see like she gave him a little bit of, uh, you know, and we got to remember that she's a woman at the end of the day. Yes, she was on her gangster. Yes, she was really manning things down. Yes, she was really in the streets. But as a woman, you have certain emotions and not to mention that kind of played out in a lot of the things that was going on between 
K.I. And you know her personal life Aside from all the bodies The tweets that she would make It sounded very emotional You gotta remember Even though she was in these streets She was still a woman A young lady at the end of the day So they still have emotions And no matter how you try to hide it You know They still gonna show somehow some way Now even though these two flirted back and forth, things heated up when allegedly K.I. killed J Money and also Tony King Vaughn about J Money being killed while he was behind bars. I honestly think Vaughn had some love for her up until that point because J Money was really his friend and that one hit home. Alright, it seemed like at that point, that's when all the games stopped and that's when Vaughn really got on his hunter, really crazy predator up mentality. I don't know how to call it, but it seemed like that's when all the games stopped. Now, the day King Vaughn was released on that charge, February 11, uh, 2014, he tweeted K.I. asking her, quote, if she missed him, and quote, why she didn't come see him, all right? Now, everything was going normal until K.I. tweeted this. She said, quote, how it feel to lose your homie while you behind them bars during that time, end quote. And then King Vaughn replied, rest in piss, P-Crack, and Modell, and then K.I. replied, quote, if I could, I'll dig J Money up and shoot his vagina A word again. Devil emoji and 100% emoji. So pretty much what she was doing, she was letting it be known that she is responsible for that body. Now, it, that that might sound real crazy, but at the end of the day, that's how this whole Chicago drill scene was back in the days. These people are on Twitter, on social media, pretty much indicting themselves. I don't understand how none of them was able to get caught. I don't know how they was able to still walk the streets and still catch as much bodies as it um, as they did. This is why I also be thinking that things are very suspect because these, mind you, they was kids. Like we we hear about these individuals and we may think that they were older, but they were just as young as 13, 14, 15. If you look at some of the tweets, Vaughn is talking about him being in school. So it's no secret that these, they were kids, man. They getting away with literally killing each other. You know, so once again, it was a def it was definitely a, a different time back then. These people were sitting on Instagram and incriminating themselves and just saying whatever they want. And I don't know, no repercussions was brought upon their way. Now, fast forward, K.I. was killed April 11th of 2014 by a quote, hooded man while walking to a friend's house. Now reports say she was shot nine times in Woodland on Woodlawn around 3 3 30 p.m. She was shot in the chest, jaw, leg, and neck, and later died at 5.43 due to her injuries. Now she was with two other people, including her twin brother, who were also shot, but they survived. Now it says days after KI's death, King Vaughn tweeted this: quote, In words killed my homie, and I made them feel it. Hundred emoji. That was April 15, 2014 at 7, 16 p.m. Then another tweet came in when he said this, quote, I'm King Vaughn from O Block and I run ish. Hashtag RIP blood money. 100 emoji. He posted this on April 15, 2014 at 8.06 p.m. Now another tweet went like this. He said, quote, put your brains in your lap. You wasn't thinking anyway, end quote. Then he put the power emojis, gun emojis, devil emojis, and 100 emojis. And that was posted on April 14th, 2014 at 9.27 a.m. Then another tweet went out. He said, stretch gang. Uh, that was April 12th, 2014, the day after KI's death. And that was at 10.24 a.m. Now, he also tweeted, he said, rest in, uh, rest in piss, little B. And I'm pretty sure he was referring to, you know, KI. And he posted that on May 15, 2014 at 8.54 p.m. Then another tweet came where he said, quote, Man, who is Snoop? Because I want to get real disrespectful if it's a dead op. Laughing emoji, devil emoji, 100 emoji. He posted this May 15, 2014 at 8.02 a.m. Keep in mind that KL was often referred to as Snoop from The, uh, the Wire. It was very similar in their looks. Uh, they were both, uh, you know, killing. Uh, they was both women. So, you know, what else? Um, King Vaughn also put another tweet out there. He said this. I miss my old B word. And he tagged K.I. by her Twitter at name. 
followed by a heart emoji, crying and laughing emojis as well. He posted this, which was most recent, August 6th of 2018 at 10.57 p.m. Now, King Vaughn, he even went as far as mentioning the details about her murder in a few songs like Grandson and Wait and War With Us. Now, some even said that she knew that her end was near because days before passing away, she made crazy cryptic tweets that made people think that she knew that her time was coming. She said things like this, quote, money coming, money going. It ain't like you could take it with you, end quote. Then another tweet said, quote, uh, you're nobody until somebody kill you, end quote. Then another tweet said this. I'ma die a real N word. We all got that day coming. And then a last tweet it says, in the end, we die with prayer hands and 100 percent emojis, right? So it's pretty, I don't know, like, you know, when it comes to death and when it comes to something negative happening to you, nine times out of ten, you can feel the energy before it comes. A lot of people said before death, well, studies show that before death, a lot of people tweet things like that or they just look lost so you know they just got that look like they don't you know they, they in a bad state of mind but anyway my question is this right now that we got the whole backstory between ki and, and, and king vaughn why is this story that's pretty much already out if you already know what's going on why is it coming out so suddenly now all right. This situation happened years ago, and it seemed like they already have gathered enough evidence a long time ago. Why didn't they pick Vaughn up before his passing? You know, now it's all over blogs and everything due to quote unquote hack leak data, they say. Why now? Now, the story that's going around, they're saying this. This is from an article. It says this. The investigation revealed that the victim was killed by Davon Bennett, a.k.a. King Vaughn, the document states. The CCSAO reviewed the investigation and concurred that Bennett was positively identified as the offender in the incident and felt that they, uh, they would be unable to meet the burden of proof in court and formally rejected charges. It should be noted Davon Bennett was charged with first-degree murder recorded under HX 281542 and that he shot and killed Malcolm Stuckey, no IR, on 29th May 2014. Now, my thing is this. If they failed to meet the burden of proof, how is it coming out that he is, in fact, the suspect? Now, for the ones that already know what's going on, it's no mystery that there were two other individuals that was involved in this case. And there's no mystery as to what happened, but that's if you know what's going on. In fact, when King Vaughn died, Duck's mother went and said, quote, you can get your rest now, K.I., end quote. So if you wasn't on game before then, pretty much that should have told you. But at the same time, allegedly, there were two other um, two others involved with the whole situation with K.I., King Vaughn. And, you know, so why is King Vaughn being highlighted in this whole thing, in this whole situation now? You know, that's another red flag. And, that, and those are questions that people aren't asking. Or theory is this. Maybe this will help a certain someone play innocent in a current ongoing case where they might put all the blame on King Vaughn, try to pin him as a savage already and make it seem as if this was all his doing in the case that he has with such and such. I mean, he's not here to defend himself. So why wouldn't they? Put all the blame on him in the first place. Do y'all get it? Do y'all get where I'm going? And I'm not saying this is the exact reason, but sometimes, you know, you got to add certain things up. And even, you know, maybe I could be wrong, but at the same time, I don't know, man. This is this is looking too weird. It's not adding up. It looks suspect. Now, also, K.I. was a well-known savage and had a few bodies under her belt that even the public already know about. So since when did the police care so much to investigate another savage's death like this and suddenly make it their business to find her suspect or broadcast it? Meanwhile, bodies is dropping left and right in Chicago and cats is getting away with it, even in broad daylight. Look at FBG Duck or look at uh, a more current situation, KTS Drake. Who just been murdered in front of a whole jail Come on Now Someone is definitely 
tipping these guys off. And when I say tipping them off, I mean like someone is put. I feel like someone is fueling this, and I could be wrong. Like I said, y'all let me know how y'all feel in the comments. Don't just let me speak my mind. How do y'all feel about this? Why is it so sudden? Is anybody feeling like this as well? I find it hard to believe that they had enough evidence to pick up King Vaughn and just never did. It doesn't make sense. They let him stay out, especially him being as famous as he was, right? They let him stay out. And now that he's gone, he's bringing it back to life. Unless it was all part of an agenda in the first place. And some of y'all going to rush to call me some type of conspiracy theorist, which is cool. But y'all got to read between the lines, man. And even if you don't, at least admit that something isn't adding up. From all the incriminating tweets Vaughn done put on Twitter uh, to all the song references he done did or said that he was incriminating himself in before. You mean to tell me y'all didn't pick up on that then and now suddenly it comes out that he actually is the killer? Come on. Come on. And we all know that he wasn't the only one. So why just him? And oh yeah, before I forget, right? To add salt to the injury and scorn Ki's family, in 2019, the TV network did a documentary on Ki and thought it'd be a good idea to interview King Vaughn, who was an opposing member and rival of Ki. They thought it, uh, it'll show unity or peace, I guess, to have King Vaughn up there, but I'm assuming they had no idea that they was actually interviewing the suspect. I mean, come on, King Vaughn was on there trolling the whole time. But if you didn't know the situation, then you wouldn't have understood what was going on. And it's crazy because he even went on there talking about wanting to have sex with this girl on TV. And he is the suspect. That's crazy. But now also my theory, you know, my conspiracy theory mind tells me that maybe that that was the feds trying to set Vaughn up to say something incriminating so they could book him then. Or have some type of evidence on him then. But Vaughn ain't no dummy and we know that. But once again, out of everybody else, man, to have on that show dedicated to uh, uh, K.I., why I pick King Vaughn? That's another red flag. But anyway, I'm going to leave all that there, man. I hope this cleared up a few questions y'all had or helped y'all better understand a few things. Yes, K.I. was a girl, but she was very, very, very dangerous. Don't get that part confused. Also, I always tell y'all, man, if you live by the gun, you'll die by it as well. There's no sympathy in the streets. If you live by the gun, you will die by the gun, and that's just it. All right? Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell so you're notified every time we drop new content. And remember, as long as y'all keep on watching, I'm going to keep on dropping. I'm out.